welcome to Catacrist Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catacrist.com. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston. I'm speaking with Coop, the lead singer from um, the band Signal to Noise. Um, how are you doing today, Coop? I'm doing well. How are you? Um, I'm doing great, and, and I've been looking really forward to talking to you. And um, i got to ask, and just like looking at the photos of your band, um, I've always loved bands that not just have a great sound, but kind of have something theatrical, visual going on. Is that something that you were always into growing up? Is that something you always wanted to do with the, uh, your band? Absolutely. And, and what, what really impresses me about um, just looking at the photos uh, of the band is, um, you know, you guys have your really own kind of distinct look. I mean, you don't look like a Kiss or Alice Cooper. You look like you got your own thing going, if you know what I mean. And I think that's really impressive. Oh, thank you. And so talk about, like... Um, I noticed each guy kind of has a, a name, like you go by Coop. Um, um, so, did each guy kind of um, design their own character? And let's talk about your character and um, how you came up with it. Um, it's not, well, the funny thing is that it's not really... Um, okay, character. Uh, it's to, yeah, it's hard to explain. It's not really characters. It's just, um, those are nicknames we, I mean, Koopa okay. is something I've been called since I was a little kid in school. Uh, <laughs> so it, okay. It just kind of stuck. And then... Uh, Breezy, our bass player, her, her nickname, same thing. I think she's had that since she was younger. Yeah. Okay, I guess kind of what I'm asking is, like, I look at the picture, for example, of you, and kind of, um, to me, just, just um, visually, it looks like kind of a, a, a wicked kind of um, real kind of rocking looking clown. Um, is, is that at all kind of close, or you just kind of, um, that's the design you came up with? Uh, it changes all the time. Oh, but cool. Right now, it's, it's that, yeah, we just, I just kind of, Morph to what my how I feel at the time, so oh, just, that that makes it that much more cooler because every time nobody um, really knows what they're gonna get when they come to see one of yours. They know they're gonna get something theatrical, but I dig that that um, you know even looks wise, um, it's not the same um, uh, design. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, I like to especially you know every time we do a new album, I definitely like to try to reinvent myself a little bit and have some fun I, I just think visual art is just as important as music uh, it's all art yeah, so I, I think uh, if you want to get you know if you're trying to get people that have never heard you uh, engaged in your music I've always felt like if you have a good visual appearance then it might entice them to stand there and give it a listen I mean so, um, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree some of my favorite bands I mentioned Kiss Alice Cooper even um, if you go back to like Deep Purple with uh, Blackmore I mean um if you went to see Deep Purple back in the day, I mean, um, it's not like listening to a record. They would jam out to one song for like 30 minutes. And it, it's and if you want to stay home and listen to a record, do that. But um, I, I much rather go see a show where it's much more than, you know, five guys in jeans and T-shirts. Um, I, I want to be entertained. Agreed. And, and let's talk about some of the music that influenced you. Who are the um, bands and artists that influenced you doing, to do what you're doing now? Oh, man, that list is huge. I, just, I love music. Uh, but, I mean, if, if any one, if I had to pick one band, Queen is my absolute favorite band of all time. Yeah, well, that, that's very interesting. I mean, um, you know, people might not get that influence, like looking at photos of you and your band right away, but I think it's very interesting because Queen, especially Freddie Mercury, I mean, uh, if you go back to the 70s, they had kind of a British glam rock look. That's uh, kind of the era of that type of music. And, you know, Freddie was really into the makeup and, and and taking it extra miles and, and roger and some other guys got dolled up too but, but mostly freddie and um and queen interesting enough i mean all those guys were great songwriters and i think that's why roger and brian are still able to go out as queen um you, you know uh even without freddie because um those songs i think were even bigger than, than the band if you know what i mean in the sense that um for so many of our um of us, those were the songs of you know the soundtrack to our lives. Those both songs, I mean, Bohemian Rhapsody, Somebody to Love, Killer Queen, they they all mean so much um, to everybody. Well, I think they they were able to do that and still are because Queen's one of those bands where they they don't really have a genre. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they they're like, able to. I mean, they got songs that sound country. They got songs that sound metal. They got songs that sound pop. You know, regular, straightforward, hard rock. I mean, they're all over the place. And I, I think that's one of the things that makes them timeless and amazing is they, they never cared about genre. They, did, they just yeah. played. And like you said, too, that they were all writers. Yeah. So when you have multiple people in the band all writing, you're going to constantly get 
different stuff thrown at the table and not everybody's stuff always got picked you know yeah, a, lot, yeah. a lot of stuff you know freddie would do submit music and brian may and all of them and then they picked the best that they felt at the time yeah and i i, I think with you know what's interesting if you even uh, talking about queen if you even look at um the final album they put out that innuendo album before freddie died you listen to a song like um these are the days of our lives we might not have known at the time but you listen to those lyrics now the guy wrote that song about he knew he was dying. Yeah, I know it's it's pretty damn heavy yeah. to listen to. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's it's amazing. And so, um, how long has your band been around? How, how long we've been a band? Yeah, I mean, as a band, how long have you guys been around doing doing what you're doing? Uh, well, Signal technically we formed in 2012, but I think uh, professionally we were really hit the scene and was on the scene from 2013. Oh, oh, cool, and um. Now, now I, I gotta give you guys credit because um, congratulations on your new record deal with um, Dark Star Records. I mean, that's a label oh, thank you. that I'm starting to hear a lot about, and probably the one of the biggest um, things they recently put out was um, Tony Martin's solo album. You know, he's a former singer from Black Sabbath, and I dare say that's the um, probably his best-selling album, maybe of his career, or even um, you know, at least since Black Sabbath. Yeah, no, it's booming. It's it's selling really well. So, and, and that's a label uh, that really is getting behind the artists, and and so that's why I really think you guys um, got some pe great people behind you. Thank you. Yeah, we think so too. We we uh, I, I, you know I, I sat and waited. It was a you know we had a few um, you know different labels over the years. You know, asking yeah. us, submitting you know offers, and it just nothing was really. I was enjoying being independent, and then uh, you know, Dark Star came around, and they were just. You know, I, I liked how humble they were and that they were actually seemed to really enjoy the music, which yeah. means the world to me more than, you know, I don't want to hear about, you know, oh, we'll make you rock stars, blah, 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 yeah, all yeah. that, you know. You know, his, money's going to come in and, you know, all that crap. I just, it's all, you know, fluff and none of it means anything. So when someone tells me that's, you know, on a professional level, like, I really dig your tunes, like, I'm really enjoying the music. I think we can do something with this. That's what, that, that's, that's what sold me. So let, let me ask, um, how many um, albums have you guys put out to date? Uh, this will be our fourth. And are the other albums still available, or I was kind of curious? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, we're all over. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Xbox Music, PlayStation Music. I mean, you name it, we're all over there. That's, that's cool, and um, can people get physical copies? Um, just I, I ask because I'm an old school guy, and um, kind of some of the bands I mentioned, um, you, you can imagine that I have a big um, CD and um, record collection, but um, just I, I always love to have something to look at. Again, going back to the visual thing, something like, you know, Kiss Alive, getting that for the first time, opening up. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think kids today are really missing that experience of going to uh, the record store. People oh, listening to this. Oh, man. Like, I know. It was what? an amazing experience. You know, I wish it, it, it needs to come back. Yeah. What's a record? Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> But um, yeah, uh, like I, I could really get into a band like you, and that's the reason I was asking too. Because um, like I, I was, um, I went on YouTube and I was checking out some of your videos and the songs, and um, knowing very little about the band and just having the press release the publicist sent me on you guys, um, checking out some of the stuff, and, and I'm digging. I like, wow, this is a band. I, you know, I don't know too much about, but bet, I, I'm loving what I'm hearing. I'm loving what I'm seeing. You know, visually in the videos. And um, so let's talk about, you know, is there a projected release date? Like, are you working towards a full-length album or an EP? Uh, the, uh, our new album's all done. Oh, okay. We, yeah, it's already finished, uh, you know, sitting in the dock, and it's all uh, Dark Star is setting up the release and all that. I don't think I can say too much about it, because okay. they got to officially it, announce it. I, I, yeah, I think I can say, though, it'll uh, this summer, I believe, will oh. be the... Oh, that's... that's I, don't, some... I don't have actual dates, but yeah, yeah the, the new album's all done. That's something definitely to look forward to then, and um, uh, and I can just imagine like um, just looking at one of your music videos. Like I said, is vi visually pleasing. It, it's um, the music is um, quite different. I mean, you guys got um, you know definitely a metal band, but I think you got a unique sound. You, you do not sound like um, I can't sit here and say, oh, well, they're trying to be like Megadeth or Metallica. You got your own sound going, and I, I think that's what people are gonna dig. Well, thank you. That we uh, it, it's it's funny because I mean, as I'm sure you know, trying to be original in music is borderline impossible. Just yeah, yeah. Everything's everything's been done. Every note's been played. But I think the way to kind of appear original is to not care yeah. about 
what you're doing. Just love what you're doing. I don't, I don't yeah. think, you know, if, if you go into it trying to sound like something that's trendy at the time or trying to appease a certain demographic, then you're going to be pigeonholed and you're going to be, you know, but I think if you just go into music just for the sake of writing music and loving it and whatever yeah. happens, happens, so. I mean, you even take a band like, a legendary band like Kiss been doing it for, you know, 50 years now and, um, you know, they're towards, they're supposed to be on their farewell tour and, um, it's kind of interesting, you know. They, they um, took off the makeup for you for a few years, but fa what fans ultimately wanted was the makeup, and that's why they they put it back on. And um, you know, they they uh, they just continue to be successful no matter what they do. Yeah, well, well they've managed. Kiss is a, a rare exception yeah. where they've just managed to. You know, Gene is a you know he's a marketing genius. Let's be honest, he's a good yeah. business yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy will put Kiss on anything. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he's he's found a way to, you know, market that band in a way where it's just appealing to. I mean, I've been to a Kiss concert and I saw little eight year old kids there with their parents, all the way up to like you know sixty, seventy year old people oh, in yeah. the audience. I mean, every walk of life goes to a Kiss show. I mean, and, and yeah, that I mean, says a lot. I that, mean, that's it's, a, it's interesting. They're one of the few bands that. Um, I think, you know, because they've managed themselves for several years and they really are in charge of their own um, career. I mean, talk about branding and, and PR and stuff. Um, a lot of times they put, you know, PR stuff out there and the fans just kind of eat it up and whatever they're, they're buying whatever they sell. But, see, Kiss, a lot like we're talking, not only do they have something visual going, but they have good songs. I mean, they, they, can, write, they can write songs. They've been doing it for 50 years. So um, there, there's, there's a little something there, you know? Well, I think they managed to. I, I think a, a big stigma, at least in the rock world, is the minute you mention pop or you mention yeah. popular music, people get all, oh, you're selling out. Here. And I just think that's such a silly, all pop means is popular music. And then realistically, if you're a musician trying to make a living at it, don't you want your music popular? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I feel like that's kind of the goal. So yeah. I've never understood why that's such a stigma thing to say. I, I think the reason why Kiss has a, a career like they've had, or even bands like ACDC or Aerosmith or Molly Crew or all these bands, is because their music's pop. It's pop rock, pop metal. You yeah. know, it's able to appeal to a large audience because it's very, it's kind of safe. There's no, you know, the metal heads like it. Yeah. The regular, you know, regular pop people like it. You know, my parents like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, it, I think that's great. I don't think that's a bad thing. I've never understood why that's a bad thing. It's kind of like I remember when they had a huge hit with um, "I Was Made for Loving You," and they got accused of um, oh, it's a disco, oh, disco song. Hit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it was, it was one of their biggest selling songs, and people still demand to hear it. So I, I, I don't really have a problem with stuff like that either. And you know, like I remember when Jason Newstead from Metallica was saying, you know, people accuse of Metallica, oh, you guys have sold out. You cut your hair, trying to look trying to look uh, go pop or whatever and they're like uh, yeah you're right we sell out we sell out every night <laughs> every seat in every house yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and so um wow that's that's pretty exciting that uh, and i gotta say talking about your publicist um i gotta give a shout out to michael because um he helped to set up the interview but um he's he's really another great one to have on your team because um for people that don't know um your band's publicist, he, he's, he has um, been the publicist for everybody from Kiss to Britney Spears. And, and that's kind of what we're talking about. The fact that, um, you know, a publicist is willing to work with Kiss from Britney, you know, to Britney Spears. I mean, there, um, one's kind of more of a hard rock act and one's more of a pop act, like you said. But um, it's kind of like, hey, if people dig it. Why not? You know, why not with, work with, um, you know, different types of entertainers? Why not? Yeah, well, I think Michael has the same attitude where just he just looks, you know, if if it's good, he thinks people are going to enjoy it. He's, he's there to push it and help, you know, get yeah. everybody noticing it. And you know, I was curious, have you ever heard his podcast, um, Three Sides of the Coin? Because for anybody who doesn't know it, it's, um, you know, he worked, he's worked with Kiss, so it's a, they talk, him and some of his friends, they talk about Kiss and Kiss related people um, that have worked with the band over the years. And it's just amazing the success of it that has had. Yeah, we're, we're, we're uh, believe me, I'm, I'm very humbled and honored to have somebody like Michael in our corner. That, that's that been a wonderful blessing, so. Yeah, and so um, another thing I got to ask about your band is I know you guys are based out of Chicago, which um, 
I wanted, I was kind of curious, what's the music scene like there these days? And I asked because I know for years. We're actually, believe it or not, we're, we're actually based out of Maine. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, not Chicago. I, I don't know. I read that somewhere, so I apologize. But um, so yeah, what's. No, we're, we're based out of Maine. So, better question. Um, what is the. The state that no one knows exists. What is the but music. I think it's Canada. What is the music <laughs> scene like there? In Maine? Yeah. Is there much? Uh, <laughs> do you want the honest answer, or do you want the? I want the honest answer. I'm just kind of, kind of curious how. Correct answer. How does a band like you guys? I bet you, I'm willing to bet you stand out pretty much anywhere you go. Yeah, we we tour a lot. Okay. Let's just put it that way. You you got you got a tour. Wow, wow. And so you know, talking about the visual and theatrical aspect of your live show. Um, like I, I very much like Kiss. I was, or maybe even Alice Cooper. Like, um, do you guys get dressed up at the venues, or you do you dress? Um, you get. No, we have, we have, we have a tour bus, so we just you know uh -huh. we, we all get ready on the bus and then 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 go out and. And how long does it take you to get made up? Um, you know, I guess each each guy individually, kind of before you hit the stage. Uh, you know, five ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And like. Um, the other question. I looked like an idiot for a long time, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and that's another interesting question because um, I would imagine it's kind of um, a, a little bit of a safety note in that, or it's something like in resemblance to, you know, Clark Kent putting on Superman's cape and turning into Superman. I mean, um, it allows you to kind of have an alter ego, get up there and do your yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess. I mean, for me, I can't speak for the other guys, uh -huh. but for me, I mean, I dress pretty much like that. Anyway, wow. Okay. I just look. I've always been the. You know, when I was in school, I was kind of the black sheep kid, and I've always. If everybody else is doing that, I want to do the opposite. I've always been that guy. So, um, getting ready for a show, other than adding a few little details to make me make this up a little more wacky, I don't really. I don't really change too too much. Okay. I just. Um, I don't know, but I'm just looking at those photos. Um, um, uh, you know, they sent out with the press release. I was like, wow, this, this looks like something I'd want to go see. This looks pretty cool. I mean, um, definitely in your rock star garb, I guess you could say. But um, but, but I, I'd imagine you kind of had that anonymity, being able to get up, you know, on stage and get dressed up as you do. And then maybe you could go out, um, you know, in the hotel lobby and not, not um, worry about getting noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I downsize a little bit, obviously. I'm not going to, you know, yeah. hang up. You know, if I'm hanging out at home, I'm usually just sitting in my jammies. I'm not in full garb when I'm watching, you know, yeah. Netflix. <laughs> yeah, and then, like you said, I mean, you know, kind of, um, you, you're constantly changing um, the look and having different designs. Um, so, uh, um, like, how, how involved are you with that? Like, do you sit down and come up with new designs on how you're going to look or just kind of yeah, get... Yeah, well, I, I'm a... I'm a I, I also own a tattoo shop. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Yeah, so I've been in... I'm just... I kind of engulf my life in art, so I've always, I get bored really easy. Um, so whether it's me writing songs or it's me doing tattoos or anything I'm doing, I, I like, I constantly have to change. I gotta always kind of evolve it. So here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. Um, being that you're into tattoo art, um, is a lot of what we're seeing, like if look at those pictures of you um, on your face, uh, is that more tattoos than like makeup or anything? Yes. Okay. See, on my face, that's all tattoos. Amazing. See, I'm looking, thinking, oh, this guy, he's he's getting all made up, and he's got his. No, no. Wow. That's actual tattoos on my face. That's <laughs> that's interesting. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm digging it even more because I mean, that's how good it looks. I mean, um, I guess I'm gonna have to go home later and kind of look at the photo a little better, but. Just kind of glancing at the picture gradually, I mean, it looks like makeup. I'm like, wow, this this is a this is a real special look. No, the only makeup I do is once in a while I'll do a little guy liner, but that, that's it. And, and how did you and get then, into doing uh, the tattoos? It just always um, interested in I think it's just tattoos came with, I mean, I've, I've been drawing and painting my whole life, and then, you know, get, being started playing music when I was, oh my God, I remember creating my first fake guitar with crayons and a piece of wood i was uh, singing the love me do by the beatles when i was oh, like wow. four there you go so i've been wanting to play music my whole life so it's just a tattoo is kind of you know and then through the 80s watching all the you know the hair metal bands and then the 90s hit you, you know everybody from you know you name it everybody started getting all blasted with tattoos and piercings and it just 
it's just I was fascinated with the art. So I'm like, oh, I want to get some tattoos. And then all of a sudden, by getting tattoos and then drawing, I got an opportunity to learn. And I'm like, well, that that's a cool thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, and it, you know, it was it was a good gig to be honest, because otherwise, mm-hmm. as I'm sure you know, when you're when you're a musician, it's hard to have a normal job. Cause oh you yeah. Need your nights free. You need your weekends free. Yeah. And that's why musicians are always broke because most of the time we have to get some shitty factory job or, sh- or something so we can keep touring and keep playing. So and, and the I, tattoo yeah. industry was a good escape because I was able to make my own hours, yeah, uh, make make good money, and be able to still do what I really truly love to do, which is playing music. Yeah, and what's interesting is I, I would think there's a lot of money to be made do, um, being a tattoo artist for, for not just the reasons you said, but I mean, um, I know a lot of guys that you know don't have um, barely enough money for their next meal, but they'll save up $200 to get a tattoo, you know? <laughs> well, it's because I think I, the, the beauty of tattoos is even when life is hard, yeah. purchasing a tattoo is permanent, so it's something to feel like that they people feel like they didn't just throw their money away. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I you mean, know? Yeah, and, and how many of your, like, um, musician buddies have you tattooed? Oh, my God. I, a lot. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> So do you do that private? Numbers, uh, I mean, I've been, yeah, I don't even know. Wow, but, but yeah, so the years. Do you do it privately? Like, do you have your own shop, or just do people? I have my own shop. Yeah, huh. I got, I got, I have five artists that work for me. Wow, wow, and so um, I'd imagine, um, like, um, the tattoos you do, do you, do you come up with your own designs in that? Uh, it's, it's everything. A little of both. Some people come in, you know, they got a picture on Pinterest that they love and they want, or they saw some online, or people come in, they want custom work. We just draw it all up for them custom i mean we we prefer to do custom stuff but yeah. you know our job is just to give people a good tattoo so we don't care we don't judge people yeah. want to come in with uh, a picture that they want we do that and then you know we do little butterflies the little simple things all the way up to portraits and crazy back pieces and sleeves and so it's, yeah we do the whole gambit and then you know um I, have you have you ever had anybody or um, have any of the guys in the band like ever tattooed the band's name because I mean, I I know that's another common thing. Yeah, we all we all have it. That that's pretty cool, you know. And you, yeah. you're you're the perfect guy to front this band. I mean, you were truly an artist in every sense. I mean, you're a songwriter, you're a perf- live performer, you're a musician, you you do the um, tattoo art. So you're you're a visual and musical guy. <laughs> I, I I'm I'm I have to say I'm insanely blessed. I. I if somebody would have told me when I was younger, because I didn't have the best upbringing, that yeah. I'd, I'd end up here, I, I wouldn't have believed them. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm very thankful. I'm very, very thankful for oh, my yeah. life right now. Yeah, and, and I can. Hear, and how how affected were you in the band by COVID and all these lockdowns? Well, obviously it sucked. Yeah. I mean, not being able to play at all, not being being hunkered down. But um, the, the the one advantage is. When you you can't go anywhere, you can you know a lot of time to write. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I just wrote tons of music, and then you know the guys and I, you know we the crew and I we get together and and then we we formulate get those songs all finished. So I mean we're we're sitting on so much music even ahead of ourselves even wow. over this even this new album that's getting ready to come out. We have more, we have another probably a good album and a half worth of material even past that. Yeah, I have this guy I know that plays in like three different bands, and and he was telling me um, like he's got his next five albums already in the can. <laughs> yeah, I mean I think a lot of musicians are like that because we all got hunkered down. So yeah. I mean you and and you know let's be honest, these past two years have been hard on everyone, no matter which side of the political fence you're on. Yeah. These past two years have sucked. Period. Yeah. What's scary so, is yeah I'm from Los Angeles and. Um, and because they weren't allowing anything for almost two years, you know, any of these concerts or anything, um, but the legendary whiskey, for example, came very close to cl- closing down. And we had a governor out here was, you know, they you couldn't even go to a movie theater. And they're like, um, governor was saying, well, the entertainment uh, community may be changing, may not be like it once was. You may have to just. Oh, you, you talking about Newsom? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but but just the thought of that, you know, not being able to go to a concert, not being able to go to. You know, and these people I like. Think, I think not being. I think the lockdown thing yeah. and all of that 
would have been fine yeah. if everybody followed it. Yeah. It was a worldwide universal thing. Yeah. But when you have, you know, certain people doing it and then other people have special privilege and then certain stores have to yeah. close but others don't, yeah. that's when you have to start questioning. And then unfortunately, if you question anything, then you're horrible and somehow you're racist and you're yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm you're with you. calling. I'm with you. And, and, and the, the, you know, the final thing I'll say on that is... Um, you got a governor like that, for example, and um, he's still got a job. He's not out of work, but but yet he wants to. Well, you know, if you're not willing to lock down, if you're not willing to close down your business, we'll we'll um, fine you. We'll put you in jail and all this stuff. I never thought I'd see something like that in the United States. You know, the famous thing, uh, famous quote by Mister uh, Mister Benjamin Franklin yeah. many many years ago. He said, the minute you ask your government for help is the minute you give up your freedom. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with you. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you're dead on with that. And the point I was making is, you know, um, you know, a couple of years ago, even a working musician like yourself, I, I bet you'd never thought that um, you'd go that long without having a live show or that, um, that, you know, your way of making a living could really be put in jeopardy. No, it was, it was, I mean, my business got shut down yeah. on both, both fronts. The bank got shut down, obviously. Uh, my, my tattoo shop got shut down. Wow. We, were, we were closed for over four months here in Maine. Um, it, it was, it was scary for a while. I mean, luckily, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a complete idiot. Yeah. And I had a lot of money saved, but that was my, you know, a lot of that was retirement money and money yeah. put away for, Later. you know, so yeah. I have something to, yeah. <laughs> live on when that when the day comes and I want to retire and stuff. Yeah, but I I had to dip into that to survive and keep my crew okay. And so you look at uh, yeah, you, you know you do what you got to do. Yeah, looking out for for others. That's that's good to hear. And and I was Absolutely, curious. You have to. And I was curious in regards to the new album coming out. Um, like, is it a full length album? Um, you know, how full length album. Yeah, uh, ten songs. And and um, how would you describe overall sound of it? Um, I mean, do you, do, oh man. I, I, we, that's the hardest question I get it well, well you're definitely <laughs> like, a metal band but um, would you say like the songs kind of do they all sound the same do you, are they... no sonically yeah yes I mean my voice is my voice yeah. the way I write is the way I write but it, it's kind of all over the place as far as a mood there's some angry songs in there yeah. there's some heartfelt warm songs in there um, this is just some straightforward, just we, kind of contemplative songs in there. We get you doing a power ballad or anything like that. What? Any power ballads on there? <laughs> um, I don't know if you. I mean, there's a couple of mellow songs in there. I don't know if they. I don't know if they, they would be considered the power ballad. No, but, but I'm just being kind of funny. But you know, like maybe um, something a little softer. But I, I, I dig that. Oh, like absolutely, you're, I love I love ballads, man. Uh, I love yeah. singing mellow stuff. I think that's where you can get your most. Uh, sincere thoughts out I, I love to slow things down and just kind of I mean uh, yeah know. I mean I, I do too I mean um, I, I love everything I mean um, that's why I liked a lot of those bands from the 70s and 80s when I was growing up I mean um, even again I bring up Kiss one of their biggest hits probably the biggest hit they ever had was the song Best sung by the drummer Peter Chris um, yeah. and Gene and Paul I mean, didn't even Gina. Ballads are awesome. They just got a bad rap during the 80s because yeah. it was that formulaic, you know, you, yeah. you, you throw out your big rocker and oh, yeah. then you instantly follow it with the power ballad. Yeah, I mean, that that was the thing, like you said back in the day, but, um, you, you know, it... Um, well, Motley Crue technically, without meaning to, started that because they they did Theater of Pain album and Smoke in the Boys Room came out and that did well for them and then and they Home released Sweet Home Sweet Home and that was technically the first like power ballad and then after that because Home Sweet Home blew up so much then next thing you know all the record companies are like okay every band we need a rocker and then get the power ballad out there yeah and, and I it mean, became the yeah. staple and then and MTV back in the day I mean. Um, um, they were they really um, pushed a lot of those bands you know over the top and that's that's the way it was done back then and you know MTV is very interesting because I mean there really isn't an MTV it's all we got YouTube that's what we got now <laughs> well I don't know why MTV is even still called MTV I don't even understand that yeah, it's television just, at it's all. just network it's, it's a network is what it is it's, it went from um, being you know turned into a reality show or I don't even know what it is really like you said I mean they had a hit that's with what I'm the, saying, who even watches it yeah they hit with the is real that world. A relevant station anymore? Yeah, from what I understand is, you know, um, they had a hit with the, video music awards. Why? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's just like they, something they do once a year, and, and it's like. Um, yeah, but my argument with 
that is like, what is the point? You're not a music television station anymore. Nothing you do is really embodies music or, or supports music. So therefore, you having video music awards every year is pointless, and it puts no merit in that award. I, I'm with you. It, it's become like a, a joke like the Oscar Awards, which we won't really get into unless you want to. But um, like, I wasn't even going to watch that last night because, um, first of all, all the movies are nominated, stuff I've never even heard of. Um, a lot of it's um, TV stuff, you know, from streaming services. So it is what it is. But um, uh, that's why we need bands, um, you know, like Signal to Noise. And I got to ask you, I always ask, um, I know one of the hardest things is coming up with a band name. How did you guys come up with that? Uh, I came up with a name from a font on the computer. <laughs> ah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, again. Because um, <laughs> I, I, was, I was coming up with other names, and I was just going through fonts, and then I typed out one of the other kind of wacky names I was, I was coming up with and that was I just liked the way the font looked and then the, the end up the name of the font was Signal to Noise I'm like oh that's kind of a cool band name yeah and I, I think it's a cool band name too because um, like I was watching one of the videos and just as the song is starting it kind of like you know it just, it's starting off and then it really kind of picks up and I'm like Signal to the Noise you know it's it's on the way it's going to kick in um, just, just great stuff and um, final question for today um um, uh, Michael, if you don't mind. Um, so, when was the last time you guys played a show? Have you played? Have you played out recently, or, or are you going to wait till the new album comes out? Oh no, we we're, we're playing shows. We just uh, we just played a show locally um, last weekend, and then we're playing this Saturday um, further up in our state. And then we head out on tour on the twentieth, and then we're touring all across the country. Uh, we're touring with uh, the band Every Mother's Nightmare. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, man. No, great band. Very underrated band from back in the day. But um, yep. I think it's cool. Yeah, we're going on tour with them. Uh, going to do a, a national tour with them. And then our, while we're out on that tour, I believe our album will probably drop or come close to dropping. Yeah. And then we go right back out on the road again. I mean, very we're cool. I have no idea. Very cool band, Every Mother's Nightmare. Very underrated. Yeah, they're great. They're they, a cool rock band. They've been out for years. I know. I remember when they were out on Paris Records. But um, I, I, I love that you guys are taking them out with you because um, they're, they're they're a band that just been doing it for years and they deserve they deserve an opportunity like that. Yeah, they're workhorses, man. They 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 haven't stopped doing it, which I have. You know, you have to put tip the hat to that. Yeah. Well, well, well. I'll tell you what, Mike uh, or Cooper Cooper Ryder. Coop, yeah, Coop, Koopa, Coop. Koopa, okay, there you go. Um, anyways, if you're happy with the way the interview came out, um, I'm going to be posting about a week or so. I'll let you know in a minute it goes up. Um, feel free to share on any of your sites. and We absolutely will. And again, if you're happy with the way, let's keep in touch, and I'd like to do it again once um, the album comes out. Absolutely. It was great talking to you. Okay, anytime, my friend. I really enjoyed it. Take care. You got it. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Chaotic Drift Magazine.